Hello everyone, it's Tuesday, Harp Tuesday. It's May 3rd, 2011, and today I'm going to be continuing my in-depth look at Gabriel Fauré's Impromptu. And today I'm going to look at the this little middle section that we sort of skipped over last time. On my version it happens starts on page 3 and goes on page 4 and 5. So let me play you a, a, a clip of a performance of me playing that. Welcome back. I, I wasn't completely happy with that performance, but it will serve as an illustration of some of the things that I'm going to be talking about. And this middle, this, I think of it sort of as a middle section, I guess, um, is in many ways the trickiest part of the whole piece. Not technically, because we certainly get a lot more sort of flashy, showy, quote, hard stuff happening later on. But this is the one that's most puzzling musically. In most of the piece, it's fairly clear what to do musically, or at least to me, the music tells me what I want to do with it. Which doesn't mean that you don't want to pay attention, you know, the, even this very opening, as I talked about, even the very opening, the... You don't want those to just be a bunch of chords, you want there to be a, this sense of overall line. But that line is fairly easy to find, it's fairly easy to, to get a sense of what to do with it. And of course what you, what it may tell you to do with it is something that might be completely different than I'm doing, but I still think that that's, through the bulk of the piece, it, it, 
it's quite easy to figure out what you want to do with it and where it's going. Whereas with this section, it's much, it's much harder. It's, this section is very reminiscent of another piece that Fauré wrote for the harp, uh, The Lady in Her Tower, and it sort of, it, it meanders around. It doesn't necessarily have a clear direction, and it's just sort of, I think one way to think of it is it's a little slice of time, so that most of the piece, we're, we're, it's really obvious that we're going somewhere, and things are happening. But this section is much more contemplative, and perhaps we need to strive to create a sense of just spinning in space. We don't, we don't want it to feel dead, but perhaps just, ah, oh, th th this relaxed moment where we aren't hurrying anywhere, where we're just enjoying this moment as it happens. To me, this section starts with, uh, with this uh, tempo, the... and we periodically throughout this, we get these statements there with these big low chords and typically marked uh, tempo and, and forte. And then in between that, we have this first section marked minimoso. It's a little less. And now my version has the whole piece marked at allegro molto moderato 76 to the quarter and but if you listen to recordings and i definitely suggest listening to as many recordings or searching youtube listening to different performances people will take various different tempos and all of those tempos can be made to be effective so but here when this little section starts minimoso and it doesn't necessarily have to mean that it's much of any slower it just needs to feel slower that instead of this you know this this fairly driving you know even that which is somewhat flowing it's got all these notes that's happening it we, we, we're there's this excitement there and and now it's calmer so that even though the tempo maybe close to the same the feeling is of, of of less less quickly of less less hurry to get somewhere we, we're just sort of floating so we we get these little statements and we wander up And I tend to do, you know, pull a little bit of a pull towards then a little bit of a stretching, stretching that. But you don't want to do too much that it becomes obvious and uh, so that every time we get to that, we think, oh, yes, of course, he's just going to do this big retard. You know, it's, it's got to be subtle. It's got to be subtle. Um, and then we get we get another set of these chords. <laughs> it is and then another little wandering passage it just wanders around and floats up and then we sort of get what this whole section has been actually kind of leading us towards because we get this chordal section again but this time it, it's coming up and it's, yeah, it's, a, it's this glorious um, harmonic progression with chord and then it starts winding its way down so in a sense I think 
at least that's how I see it, the overall structure of this section is leading us to this glorious um, and wonderful harmonic progression that is different than what we've come to expect and and this lovely chord and then wind their way down again and and so I think that's one way to look at it this is definitely a section where um, as I say to me it doesn't necessarily speak and say yes this is this is how I want to be played so that I'm always ready to experiment with it and and think well hmm I wonder if it would work much slower or much faster or maybe with more of a more of a drive to it or maybe less of a drive to it or maybe you know maybe I shouldn't be aiming at that chord is the is the focal point maybe there's something else or maybe that's just a little there's maybe there's a little rise and fall with these chords and then the little meandering section rise and fall and and we don't have that point they were aiming at so with this if you're learning it for the first time you know you're you're playing through it and you're seeing what what, what does it say to you what does that seem to want to how, how does it want to be played to you and listen to recordings and and just just think about it and and experiment with it um, and yeah definitely things like playing it at a much faster tempo and the important thing to do in something like that is to record yourself because again this is this tricky thing of it's sounding different when you're not actually playing it so you can you can be playing it and you can think wow this is so fast this is just sounds so 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 rushed and hurry and then listen to the recording and you can think oh hmm actually that works I was able to make it feel smooth and uh, floating and relaxed even though when I was playing it I was thinking whoa this is was way too fast so and similarly you can try it slower than you might typically do and, and and again when you're playing it you might think oh this is just way too slow and you might be pleasantly surprised when you see that or when you listen to it recording you, you know you might not be you might say yeah that doesn't work so let's uh, let's just talk about some of the specifics here. I talked about buzzing in, in these guys, and you know just don't do it. We start this minimoso, and we have throughout this this whole section, he's playing around with three against two. In other words, within one beat, maybe the right hand's playing triplets one two three, so one two three one. And the left hand's playing duples or two notes, so one, two, one, two, one, two. And that can be a little bit tricky if you've never played three against two. And what it is, you can think of it as sixes, so that you have, you know, if the right hand's playing three notes, both of them play on one, and two, you know, what he plays on, three, four, five. Six. I think plays on one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One. Or you can think of it as one, two, and three. One, two, and three. between two and three in the triplet. So you have one, two, and three. One, two, and three. And you can, you can, when you're away from the harp, you can beat that out with your hands, you know. Well, you can't, can't see, but one, two, and three. One, two, and three. So 
just getting used to that rhythm and then counting it so that you know sometimes here you might have the left hand starting with sometimes have, for example, that second triplet's not even being played. So you might have one, two, three, one, two, three in the in the left hand so that you have, you have one, three, one, two, three. So you're missing that two. And the right hand's not on one, but it's coming in on, on a two of the duple. So one, two, and three. So that's, there's some tricky rhythmic stuff that goes on there. So the thing to do is just to take it really slowly and, and count that one, two, and three. One, two, and three. You know, uh... You get the idea. Yeah, 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 Sorry about that, but um, it's kind of strange to to uh, to tr be trying to to play it that slowly and count which I should do more of that than I, I should be able to do that. Um, but sometimes when you've, you've played a piece so often, uh, it can be in your hands, but then when you try to break it down really slowly, suddenly you're, instead of just relying on that, that muscle memory, you're suddenly saying, hey, wait a minute, what, 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 what what's going on? So yeah, just kind of that one, two, and three, until it it can flow and become natural and of course that's the thing about all this little section is it needs to it needs to flow it needs to just float along um and then we get to this this final set of chords that i was talking about the, the perhaps the, the the goal the point that everything's been leading towards uh, you probably don't want to start it too loud You'll notice it's Mark Forte, then we have this crescendo, then we have a hairpin crescendo, and, and the Sempre um, Forte, but, you know, there's only so much we can do, so I like to sort of, it's kind of like you're saying, here, you know what, here, here it is, it's happening, so that you're not, you're not in their face right at the start of this, it's kind of, it's kind of here, it, it's, it's, it's coming! You know, and and that it's got some room to to go to, so that. Reminds me that expressivo, right at the beginning, we have minimos and we have uh, at your pleasure. Um, and so the important thing is to first of all learn it in tempo so that you can be playing it along with a metronome, that you have all these twos and threes and everything getting placed in the right spot. Because it's really important when you're going to be moving things around 
to know where it is that they are supposed to be so that there's a huge difference between having having a piece where the rhythms all just wow and a, and playing a piece where you're doing a lot of stretching of the rhythm you know tons of rubato here and there blah, blah, blah. but you are very much aware of, of the structure of the rhythm and how it is supposed to fit in so so you know learn it with a metronome and, and then of course feel free to do a little, some pulling and, and stretching and and uh, you know I again as I was talking about these little runs you don't want it to do too much you don't want it to become yeah I uh, especially when we contrast it with the rest of the piece which is very much straightforward and straight ahead we don't want to have a ton of rubato we don't want to have a ton of stretching but we can definitely do some and uh, towards the end on this on page five we, we again we get another point where you can maybe bring some intensity and, and sort of lead into it and I, I'm never quite sure exactly how much I want to do that this it, you know it, it culminates in this <laughs> So again, play around with that, but there is a spot there where you can bring some, some intensity into this section. And then we close it off with this little harmonic section. I think in that uh, recording that I, I played right at the start, um, I actually sped up a tiny bit, which is not good um, because we're, we're just winding our way down here. And it's tempting to because there's there's an suddenly we don't have all these triplets and we just have but you want to make sure that it still maintains this nice peaceful quality and it's this section is finishing off so we're just you know we're just playing some notes and doing this finishing this off nicely and it's not there's it there's no huge importance it's just like the rest of it, it's just just floating there in space, and we you know we, we wander our way around some glisses, and finish it off, and then get ready to go with this this fast and exciting section that I talked about last week. So there's that little middle-ish section, and hopefully I had some things that you found interesting to say about that. Um, and of course next week we'll get in towards the, we'll get, in, get towards the end, or, or not next week, two weeks from now, uh, we'll, we'll talk about this fun little section with a bunch of great arpeggios and, and then this nice little section here towards the end when we get quiet again. So until that time, um, take care and I will see you again in two weeks. Cheers. <laughs>